everyone, welcome back to another English language video. Today we are looking at English language paper 2, question 3 for the AQA exam board. So question 3 reads the following. You now need to refer only to source A from lines 20 to 28. How does the writer use language to describe eating fantail sweets? And it's 12 marks. So this is an example question. And the skill that's being assessed here is assessment objective 2. So what is assessment objective two? It's the following. Explain, comment and analyze how writers use language and structure to achieve effects and influence readers using relevant sub supporting terminology. So the question itself is asking you to analyze language and how it's used for effect as well. And how is it effective? So there's certain things that you need to consider when answering this question. And they include the following. So shows detailed and perceptive understanding of language. So the key word here is perceptive. So how do you provide perceptive understanding? You need to look at the quotation in different angles. You look at the quote. You look at the connotations of the words. You look at the explicit, so the obvious information, the obvious things that you can understand from it. And also the implicit, the not so obvious. So this is how we show perceptive understanding of language. Secondly, analyzes the effects of the writer's choices of language. This is very important. If you're, if you're aiming for the higher marks, you need to focus on the effects of language. So what is the impact of the language used? Whether it's using an adjective, whether it's using a simile, whether it's using a metaphor, you need to explain in detail what the effects are. So don't, don't just say it makes the reader interested okay that is not providing detailed understanding or showing detailed understanding of the text next up selects a judicious range of quotations very important a judicious range this means you have to be very selective with your quotations so do not just pick out any random quotes make sure you are very selective and you choose quotations that are best suited to answer the question now often a lot of students they choose the wrong quotations and they struggle to analyse the quote. So make sure you take your time picking out the right quotations to answer the question. And the last one here we have is use a range of subject terminology appropriately. So when what we mean by this is when you are analysing language, make sure you are using the correct key terms. So if you have a quote and there is an adjective there, make sure you identify the adjective and explain the effect of using that. Moving on, perceptive comments are made about why these techniques are used and the effect they have on the reader. So once again, this word appears numerous times in the specification. Focus on the effect. Don't just uh, identify the use of a personification, uh, metaphor, simile, etc. Focus on the effect. If you want the eight out of the twelve out of twelve, the higher marks, you need to focus on the effect. Now, just moving on to the next part here, language. As you are expected to analyse language, what is expected for you to cover here? So I've divided this into three categories to simplify it for you all. So this includes the following. So number one is the words and phrases. So that includes how does the writer use adjectives? How does the writer use nouns, verbs and adverbs, etc.? So there's always something to comment on in terms of Number one, you'll always find this in your exams. Secondly, language techniques, the use of similes, metaphors, emotive language, etc. How has the writer used this for effect? And again, once again, you will always find this in your extract. So do make sure whilst annotating you label these. And the final one is the use of sentence forms. What, what type of sentence forms has the writer used? Have they used a short, simple sentence, a complex sentence, a compound? imperative, inter interrogative or declarative as well. So these are some common features that you may find but I need to stress and emphasize that the first two are significant because they hold a higher weighting. So number one and number two. Um, if you do not find anything to do with sentence forms it's not the end of the world. You can still get full marks but often you will find something to do with sentence forms. And finally, just some top tips for you for question three for English language paper two. 
aim for three to four detailed paragraphs. As mentioned before, focus on the effect. Effect, okay, that should be in your mind. What is the effect? Spend up to 15 minutes on this question, okay? Anything more than um, I would be concerned for you. So I would say at most spend 15 minutes on this question. And finally, avoid making vague statements. So ask yourself how and why. So don't tell us, oh, it makes the reader interest, interested or this creates tension. Tell us how and why, okay? So avoid these vague statements and be specific with your analysis. And if you can do this accurately, then for sure you can achieve the higher marks. And that takes us towards the end of the video for question three, analyzing language for paper two. Uh, I hope this has given everyone a better understanding of how to analyze language. Please subscribe, like and share for more education related videos. Have a look at our playlist for more. Thank you.